This package is kind of spongy. I couldn't see the tracking number on it. Oh, <laughs> it actually has sponges. Oh, and that uh, brass wool or whatever it actually is. Replacement sponges for a soldering iron holder. And also, well, there's a different color tone there. I don't know what this is, but I have a couple of these brass wool kind of soldering iron tip cleaners. And especially this one I use a lot more. It's kind of getting torn up in there. So I thought I'll just have something on hand in case the time comes where I suddenly need to replace this. This one I do know the contents. It's DuPont jumpers because, again, running out of those. I can't remember the length of these though. Okay, I got some different... Wow, I don't even know if I've ever had them this long. But I got some of the short ones and the longer ones, female to female. So yeah, that's a foot long. I'm kind of running out of the female to female. I've got a couple that have never been peeled off, so those are most likely never used. I've got others where there's a couple still bound together. So I probably use these a couple of times and they may still be intact. But as these get ripped down to the individuals, I've probably used these many times and they just don't hold contact anymore and I get intermittent issues, especially when I have a whole bunch of these going between two or three boards in one project. You nudge something and things stop working so it gets hard to deal with. You might as well just start using new ones for a complicated project. So I've gotten into the habit of whenever I have something important, I just peel off brand new ones and then I have the best chance of success. This should be op amps. Well, it's some kind of chip. Sometimes you can see the tracking number on the package and other times there's five or six layers of labeling and you no longer have any way to tell what's in it. TLC 274 CN. Those are the quad op amps I recently used on this audio distribution board with stereo in and three copies of the stereo out. I was starting out trying to use an LM324, but with crossover distortion, the audio signal was not coming out the way it was going in. So the TLC 274 worked well for this purpose. And of course, I don't know if these are legitimate, but what I can do is drop one of these on this board and I can at least see if I'm getting signal integrity compared to that crossover distortion. So maybe that's an interesting thing to try. And speaking of audio projects, these two packages should contain the same thing. These are quarter inch stereo jacks. And these are switched jacks. And there it is with the contacts lifting up and separating as you plug in. I have a project coming up using the 16 by 16 analog matrix that I recently worked with. I want to get a bunch of these audio jacks lined up as inputs and another row of them lined up as outputs so I can have audio or something else going into the matrix, coming out of the matrix, having the signals being switched, and I plug in whatever the signal is using a bunch of these quarter inch patch cables. And some stuff came in from the Amazon, but I can't really fit it here. So I'll try to get through this. Um, as usual, guitar string box comes open, but individually wrapped inside. And this other set, two different brands. I just chose whatever's the best price. 
These are 9 gauge on the thinnest string, and these are 10 gauge sets. Because those guitars I recently got, the Telecaster style and the Le Paul style, both need strings. What came on them is horrible. On the Telecaster style, I want to put 9 gauge, and on that Chibson, I want to put 10 gauge. So I was totally out of stock of 10s, have minimal 9s, so those are going to be used soon. And I don't know if this is delicate, so I don't want it having stuff on it, but this is water slide decal transfer paper, white, as opposed to you can also get transparent. And this is for laser printers. I no longer have an inkjet. So you can print on here and then you cut out whatever you print if necessary and you use water to activate it and peel off the backing and you can put a decal on something. And you may have to do other stuff like spray it with some sort of a clear coat to protect it. I've not used it before, but I'm thinking if I want to maybe build an enclosure, like a metal box or something for an audio effect pedal, and I want to label it, maybe I can do this. And having it white, I can maybe use some sort of paint or markers to color it in. I don't need anything fancy. But I also have another use for this. So maybe in the next month or so, hopefully I'll get to put that to use. In here, looks like a block of cork. This is a guitar neck support. And the reason this would be useful, when doing work on a guitar and you have to lay it down on a table, it's good to have the neck supported up so it's not just unstable and laying flat. Sometimes you just need it raised up so you can get at it and not have it moving around all over the place and have it protected. Of course, you can just get a, anything that can raise something up, a block of wood or a stack of books, and then put a towel on it. But I'm probably going to be doing a bunch of work like this soon, so I just wanted to start accumulating the right tools after a couple of decades of roughing it. And on the topic of using these audio jacks in projects, I needed some patch cables. So this is a set of two I bought as a test. I haven't had them before. One of the reasons I wanted these, one end is a straight cable and one is a right angle. And also, I wanted the length of these to be more than a typical close range cable. So this is maybe the length of two of these other small ones. When you've got a bunch of things up close and you're just going even on a patch bay one to the next, this is fine. But if you've got a bunch of stuff laid out and you need to go from one end over to the other end of the table, then you may want something like this. So just looking on Amazon, this was an okay price having the straight and angled that I wanted. So I'm going to try those out and see how it goes. As an example of the different use of cables, here's a small patch cable where both are right angle. And so that's useful when you have something right next to something else you're plugging out of and into. It's good to have those being right angle so you can put these near each other and you don't need much cable length so it's short like that. But in this case, what if I still need a right angle to go here, but then I have something with a bunch of these jacks side by side, and even if you have two rows of jacks stacked, then having a bunch of these right angles, if they're going to run into each other, or depending on the height of the case, this might be hitting a floor or a shelf if you try and angle it down out of the way. So you have a right angle here and then a straight here. And you can just plug in cleanly to a row of these close space jacks. So that's what's going on here. So we have a bunch of mounting hardware. Here's a bunch of lock washers. 
M2.5 up to M8, so I figure those diameters should cover things I want to do, although they seem to be all jumbled up only between three compartments. Well, whatever. I'm just going to reach in and get whatever fits as needed. I thought I had a bunch of spare parts like this, but I recently needed one and I could not find a thing. So I went on Amazon and even compared to AliExpress, I think Amazon had the better deal. And this is a kit where I don't need stuff like this too often. So I'll be able to spend one or two years just coming over and grabbing parts out of here just when I need a couple. And right now I have a bunch of TO220 voltage regulators and some heat sinks that I don't have fasteners for. So now I can put the thermal transfer compound on here and bolt these to the uh, regulator using the parts from here. And I'm working on this PCB right now. So there's a regulator and an old heat sink. I'm trying to clean off all the old paste. Then I have to put new stuff on and get this fastened here and start writing some software for the ESP32 on this. Thanks to channel and Patreon supporters for helping make all this possible. Maybe I need to invest in some more workbench space, a project for the fall.